If I were to ask you what is the first thing you need to do as a leader when you catch a vision and have a desire to see something happen, I'm willing to bet you do not do what Nehemiah does. So if you've seen the title of the video, you probably already know what Nehemiah did, but I'm willing to bet that's probably not your first thought. Most people, when you ask them, what do you need to do first as a leader? Well, you need to have followers. You need to get knowledge. You need to get training. You need to get education. You need to get know-how. You need to go and rally people to support. You need to get supplies. There's all these things that we could list and say, this is the first thing that you need to do. But actually, I would argue this. And we're going to talk about it from the scripture and what Nehemiah does. But I would argue the first thing that a leader should do is to reflect, know themselves, and to know what their purpose and their calling is in life. You have your self-known, your purpose, your calling, and you are self-aware, then you can go and be a highly successful leader. So what does Nehemiah do? As we're studying the book of Nehemiah going through leadership traits, this is topic number one. It's the starting point. Nehemiah starts with prayer. So again, if you watch the introductory video, Nehemiah was in a foreign land. He was a Hebrew man, but was in a foreign land serving a foreign king. They were in exile. A lot of the Jewish or Hebrew people were scattered abroad because of sin and apostasy falling away from God. But we can see in Nehemiah chapter 1, where better to start in studying a book than chapter 1, but specifically verse number 6, we see part of Nehemiah's prayer. And chapter 1 is almost entirely Nehemiah just praying. So, Go read his entire prayer. It, it's really interesting. But in verse number six, this is what Nehemiah says, and this is our key verse for this thought. He says, Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night for the children of Israel, your servants, and confession or and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I have sinned. So here's a couple things that we can learn from this from Nehemiah. Is first, he has self-awareness. He recognizes the reason that he's in the position that he is, is because of the sin of the people. He understands it's their past, their past actions, their past behaviors that has led them to where they are right now. Nehemiah is in the spot that he's in because of past actions. But he is recognizing that. He's taking accountability. That is that self-awareness. He is becoming aware of what's going on in his heart, in his mind. And he knows that he needs to repent of what's done. Even if he wasn't the person that specifically committed the act, he feels that shared responsibility. That is a burden of a leader. They may not be the person that causes the problem, but they feel that burden to help solve the problem. And that's what Nehemiah is doing is he wants to get his people and his situation back where it needs to be. And so for Nehemiah, the first thing he does is he's becoming self-aware. He starts to realize that he can help solve the problem or help be part of the fix of the problem. He catches that burden because if you notice in this, he says that he is praying day and night. He is calling out to God day and night because it's a burden. It is something that he has recognized that he has to do something. He can't just sit idle. That is a key characteristic of a leader. When they realize that they have to do something, it becomes a passion, a burden. People that have a dream or a vision or a business idea they want to start, or maybe it's a church that they want to start, a ministry they want to start. When you catch that burden and catch that vision, you're going to do everything you possibly can to make it happen. It may be difficult. It may not be in the timing you want. It may not be in the way you want, but you are going to pursue it relentlessly because you feel like it is what you are supposed to do. And that's what ties into a leader's calling or a Christian's calling. When you know what God has placed you here on earth to do, you should desire to pursue that relentlessly and you should want to do that desperately. And that's where Nehemiah was at. He was crying out to God and praying day and night, every single day, because he knew it was important and his role in the situation was vital. So before Nehemiah did anything else, he became so self-aware. He called a burden for the situation, but most importantly, 
he started with prayer. He started talking to God, letting God know what was on his heart, what letting God know what burden he was catching, and praying for God's help, God's permission, God's blessing to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So before you start anything as a leader, here's what I recommend to you. Take time to self-reflect. Why are you pursuing what you're pursuing? What are your motives? What are your reasons? Become self-aware because if your motives are in the right place, then that's the first challenge overcome and that'll be a drive that can help you succeed. If your burden or your passion is not in the right place, say it's I just want to make it rich and that's your only drive, you may not have the right motivation because if you do not see the income that you expect, you're willing to throw in the towel and give up and call it quits. Don't do that. Have the right motivation. Have the right purpose in what you're wanting to do. And then finally, as people of faith, I'm a person of faith, and so this resonates very closely with me, is make time for God. Make sure that what you're doing aligns to what God's will is for your life. Seek Him, pray, talk to Him, and trust Him to lead and guide you as you go on your leadership journey. And remember, leadership is influence. Whether you're leading children or siblings or a group, a small group at church, you're leading a church, you're leading your family, you're leading friends, whomever you are leading, start with prayer, seek what God wants for your life, for your calling, and talk to Him about it daily, regularly. Don't let it be something you pray one time and then let it go. Seek Him consistently and constantly for his guidance in your life. So that's our first lesson on leadership from the book of Nehemiah. I hope you subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are, if you agree and like this lesson, and be sure to follow along as I post more leadership thoughts and topics from the book of Nehemiah, and hopefully we're going to be doing this through other books of the Bible as well. So definitely subscribe and follow along, and I'll see you in the next one.